Hey guys, Ken's 97 Sto 171. This will be my first driving video in a long, long time. Just posted um, a video. Just posted a video um, unboxing the camera that I am using right now to record this video. And I'm um, going to try the camera mounted to the passenger side window there. Uh, it's 1080p. And um, we will see how it goes. So uh, I'm going to try to go in chronological order here of kind of what's going on and uh, why I haven't posted videos in a long time. Um, first of all, a lot of it was just timing. Um, you know, I think I'd mentioned in my previous trucking videos that the, my GoPro, uh, my old GoPro had been messing up and um, I've been using my cell phone and all kinds of other ways and quite frankly it, it, it was rather tedious. Um, I didn't have a good editing software to bring audio from one thing and the video from another and put it together and um, it was just kind of a pain in the butt. Also a lot of my deliveries had been um, night I've uh, been running either at night or earlier in the morning that you know the, it wouldn't have, you wouldn't have seen anything. So that was most of the uh, problems was just I didn't really have a good way to make decent videos and I tried a few times to jerry rig and bodge things and have three different things hooked up at one time and you know it was taking me like half an hour to just to get things set up and then I'd start recording and then when I'd get home something didn't go right and then I, it was all worthless. And I just got tired of messing with it, quite frankly. Um, you know, work was busy, I was busy, and I just didn't have the energy to put the time into it. So, um, but, uh, and then, uh, I'm trying to think of all the things that, have, that went on. Um, while all that was going on, I ended up, um, bought this car. Um, it's a 2007 Kia Sorento, the old style, body on frame, and um, did that intentionally because I plan on buying some property eventually, and I wanted something that could go off-road and could tow, and this one is the best for that. Uh, um, it's got the 3.8 liter V6 in it. 260 horsepower, four-wheel drive. It's flip on the, it's switch on the fly. It's not uh, automatic. Four-wheel low, and uh, I like it. It hauls ass, and, and uh, so anyway, did that. Bought a new motorcycle. Got a 2005 uh, Z, Kawasaki Z1000. Got some new gear, and then um, had the bike about two weeks, and I had a motorcycle accident. And a dog ran out in front. We were on our first ride of the season, about 30 minutes into a 300 mile ride, and a dog ran out in front of me and I hit the dog, came off, tore my left ACL, and ruptured, uh, ripped the ligament off of my thumb. You probably can see, maybe you can see the scar there, I don't know. So, um, no surgery on the ACL, but, uh, you know, um, they're doing re I'm doing rehab to just strengthen my leg. And then I'm doing rehab on the hand. That's not going so well. Like that's about all I can do with the thumb. Is like that, and um, can't really do my job being able to move my hand only that little bit because it, uh, dragging those heavy hoses around and hammers and beating on the tree. It's just it's not going to happen. So um, that's sort of what's been going on. There's a lot of other things that I've been doing. Um, probably try to make some other videos and show those things now that I've got a camera that I can actually record things. Um, that's been the majority of reason why I haven't done any videos is I just didn't have a practical way to um, make new videos and it, it was just a really a big pain in the butt. So got this camera on the recommendation of uh, on uh, Tech Moan on YouTube and he did a nice review on it and for a hundred bucks I mean yeah, it's not a GoPro black. Uh, it doesn't have all of those features, but it's got, you know, 90% of those capabilities came with a ton of mounts, and it'll do everything I want to do 
and for the price of a GoPro, I could buy four of those, almost. So I thought, and I may do that, I may end up buying, I want to get one and try it. I may go ahead and the next time I order one, I may get like two or three more. Um, and because uh, then I could do multi position videos and do some pretty cool stuff. So, um, but uh, so that's kind of what's been going on in the life. I go to a physical therapy three days a week. And um, if anybody ever, if you, if you live in this area, in the Cincinnati area, if you ever need any orthopedic help, I highly recommend Be Beacon Orthopedics. Um, they've got several locations, and uh, I've been very, very happy with my medical care. Um, my accident was on a Saturday. I called on Monday about 9 in the morning to try to get in because I had x-rays done, and there weren't any, were not any broken bones, but they told me there, were, there was injury in there. And I uh, called on Monday morning, and they said, hey, can you come at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? And um, so I went and saw him. That first day, they um, looked at my knee, and they drained 55 cc's of bloody liquid out of my knee that first day, and my knee felt immediately a lot better. Uh, I've got a picture of that. I, if I can, I'll stick it in the video. It's, um, pretty weird looking um, and uh, then like Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I had I met another doctor about my hand because they have spe they have specialists for hands and um, the next day I had an MRI on my knee the next day I had an MRI on my hand the next day uh, I had the results for both of those and then the next day they did surgery on my hand so the accident was on Saturday and by Friday that same week I had the surgery done on my hand, and um, I probably got the days mixed up there a little bit, but, but that was the deal. It was the accident was Saturday, and by Friday, and I had all the diagnosis done, and what the treatment was going to be, and the surgery done on my hand, and then it just been rehabilitation since then, pretty much. And um, the Beacon Orthopedics is the people that work on the Cincinnati Reds, so you kind of assume they pretty much know what the hell they're doing. They have the location I went to primarily was up here in the Sharonville area, and they have two MRIs in the same building. And they have three other locations. One has another MRI. They're going to get another MRI, and then the third location is going to be getting an MRI as well. So they're going to have one or two MRIs at every facility that they have. And that's pretty amazing. Um, so. Uh, If you live in this area, I would definitely recommend them. So hopefully this will be the start of the ability for me to do some more videos. And, um, you know, just to get ease, this thing came with all kinds of mounts. So I can strap it to my you know, hat like I did. And, I mean, there's, it's going to be make it a lot easier for me to do that stuff. And uh, so I haven't been driving. Uh, I turned my truck in because I needed the truck for something else. Uh, I've been driving a day cab, which I may have showed you guys. I, I don't think I even got a chance to show you that, but they switched me into a day cab, which I hated. Um, it just rode terrible. Cold real nice, but it rode terrible. And um, had to stay in a hotel only two or three times. So. Uh, I miss working. I miss being able to ride. Um, probably not going to be able to ride the big bike. Uh, they totaled the bike. They totaled the big bike, uh, the Z1000, but I'm going to buy it back out of salvage. Uh, finances on that were just, you know, I can't, I'm not going to be able to ride it for a while anyway. So, uh, why not keep the bike? Basically, it needed new handlebars and it needed a foot peg bracket, and that was it. The tank's trashed, which sucks, because the bike was absolutely gorgeous. And again, if I get a chance and I have a good editor program, I'll put the pictures, you know, in the video. Um, the bike was
was absolutely beautiful, pretty much flawless. Like 20,000 miles, no. Uh, no, it wasn't 20, 12, 2,500 miles on it. And, um, yeah, it's probably not right, because it, it was a theft recovery bike. So, you know, it, was, it, had, it had a rebuilt title on it already, but the bike was absolutely flawless. And it was just gorgeous. And, uh, so the deal was, you know, the insurance kind of company was going to give me a certain price for it. And um, basically what I paid for it. Or I could keep the bike and they'd knock a thousand bucks off that money they were going to give me and I could keep it. And I figured it's, it cost me only $320 to fix the bike. I'm going to leave the tank. It doesn't look great, but it's rideable. And at some point I'll get another tank and do the work myself either Plasti Dip it or something, but, you know, Plasti Dip the whole bike, a different color or something like that. So, I mean, it just made no sense. If you work it out, I mean, basically I will have gotten the motorcycle for like $1,500 out of pocket by the time you work out the numbers. And um, since I can't ride it anyway, I might as, you know, might as well do that. It's going to take some time to get the bike through the salvage process and then back out, but again, it doesn't matter. So in the meantime, I picked up a um, 2010 um, Fly Scout. Uh, if you've ever seen a Honda Cub, a C90 Honda Cub, or a Passport, we call it a Passport in the States. Basically, it looks like a, a vintage Honda Cub, or Super Cub. And... Uh, the reason for that being that I wanted something that was very lightweight. I, I still have trouble with my knee if I, if I, that was a brilliant maneuver. If I put you know, my foot down and then try to put my leg over a motorcycle, my knee rotates and it hurts. And um, the nice thing with a bike like that is I can sort of step in it and it only weighs 185 pounds. So when I go to put my leg down at a stoplight, you know, I'm not stressing my knee that much. And that's what I wanted, was uh, something that wouldn't stress my knee too much. on my hand that prevented me from getting my hand around the bars and that just came off a couple weeks ago and my hand is starting to get strong enough that I can actually grip the brake pedal, the brake lever. I wasn't even able to grip or squeeze really without unbelievable pain. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. turns out. Um, I picked an angle over on the, the door there. Hopefully, you know, you'll get a shot of me and a little bit out the front of the car. Um, I didn't want to just, you know, put it on the windshield. So, um, hopefully it does a good job. I do appreciate you guys, you know, hanging out on my channel. Um, I still get quite a lot of subscriptions, I guess, people finding me for the first time. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of videos posted, so if, you know, people that have never seen my videos before, uh, I guess are still finding me. Uh, I certainly appreciate the support. I certainly don't make any money on YouTube. enough to be <laughs> worth anything. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't really have the time or effort to, time or energy to put fancy intros and outros and, and mix and match it. I, I just, you know, I, I have life to deal with. I don't, uh, I don't have the time. 
I know some people don't like the long videos and oh well eh. to each his own hissing noise under under throttle and I got to figure that out but overall I've, I've been uh, really enjoying this uh, this truck it uh, hauls ass and uh, it's reasonably comfortable and rides a bit like a truck because it is a truck basically it's body on frame solid axle on the back it does have uh, double wishbone suspension up front which surprised me and it's a, it's a true double wishbone with a um, spring and shock um, diagonally across between. So it's um, very similar to the Miata suspension, actually. And it handles quite well, actually. I was, you toss it into a corner pretty, pretty, pretty hard, and uh, it doesn't get too unhappy around the tight stuff. Where it kind of falls on its face is if you're in a corner and the road gets bumpy, it, it, it gets a little out of composure and it's just um, you know it's body on frame it's heavy this thing weighs 4200 pounds and um, you know it is what it is but I wanted something that could go off-road and that could tow and the body on frame gives it the strength that I like for what I'm probably going to do with it and um, plan on getting some property and Hopefully, I can find a piece of property that doesn't really have much of a road going to it. And, you know, a little out in the backwoods. And that's where this will come in handy. And believe me, these things are very off-road capable. You can do, um, get a 2-inch lift for like 180 bucks, and then throw a 1-inch bigger tire under it. That gives you 3 inches of lift in total, and it already has 9 inches of ground clearance stock. So you do the, the, the lift in the tires and you get 12 inches of ground clearance. And uh, out in Russia, they off-road these things big time. There's, these are made in Korea, and then there's another plant that's in Russia. And uh, if I get a chance, I'll, and if I remember, I'll post a link um, to a Russian video I found. And that's what made me decide to buy this. I, I found this video of these Russian guys with, again, just a minor lift and some decent tires. And they were slogging these three through some serious stuff more serious than I'll ever do I'm not saying it'll rock crawl that's not what I'm talking about but it'll go any place that I could ever want to take a car and way beyond and that's what I wanted something that was fairly durable um, and I didn't pay that much for this car right like 6500 bucks so you know I didn't want to spend a lot of money on something Hopefully this thing is still recording, because I have no idea what the battery life is. too. You know, I I stopped making videos because of all the things that I've already mentioned. And then there were a few times where I could have made a video, and I started thinking, well, what the hell am I going to talk about? What was the last thing I talked about? What's going on? And, like, you don't know where to start. Because you know, I kind of had a rhythm of, of doing videos, and I'd do one every once in a while and just talk about what was going on in my life and what was going on in the world and what my thoughts and opinions were of that. And, 
you get to a certain distance away from your last video and you know you don't you kind of don't know what to do and uh, No, I just didn't do anything. I'll tell you one thing, these, these uh, 1080p videos take forever to <laughs> upload to YouTube. Um, the one I did on the unboxing, I mean, it wasn't that long of a video, and when I, I set it to upload and just walked away, it was saying it was going to be like 400 minutes <laughs> to upload it. So I just, uh, you know, it'll probably take me longer uh, to upload things than it did before. Normally it was just a few hours, and um, you know, I guess that's different with HD. And unfortunately, this one thing where this camera falls down a little bit, it does true 1080p, but it doesn't do true 720p. Um, it doesn't have a negative 720p uh, chipset on it, so it the, the field of view is the same. But all it is, is it, it's, it's actually um, not 720p at 60 frames. It's 720p at 30 frames, and it doubles the frames. It just two, does two frames of each. So you know, the Tecmoan said, you know, don't, don't bother using the 720p because it's not really 720p, and it's not going to save you anything. So I'm going to use the 1080p, and I'm sure that's why it takes forever to upload to YouTube. Um, and I think they descale it to 720 anyway. So that is a negative of the camera, I think. I may try a 720p, uh, you know, and uh, video. And I almost did it today, but I didn't want my first video to be that way. So I'll, I'll try um, a shorter video done in 720 and see what it looks like. Because I think on YouTube, there's not really a lot of point to going beyond 720p. So I've got a bunch of things I can show you. I've got some new toys that I've purchased, and I haven't done any videos on any of those things. So um, that's where this camera will be nice, is I can put it back on my hat and do point of view. It's kind of my signature thing. And um, you know, if this video doesn't turn out well, not that you're going to know it, because I'll never post it in the first place, but uh, I will um, I may redo it you know, on my hat, like I always do. Oh, see, that's where it's like a truck. <laughs> you get big potholes and shit, and it, uh, it's a little... And I put new shocks in it. Uh, it actually didn't help that much. I bought some KYB GR2 shocks, which is what everybody said to get, and it... It rides like maybe 20% better than it did. Not much. I wouldn't have bothered if I'd have known how little it was going to improve it. It does. It did improve it, but it wasn't worth the work. I had a friend do all the labor because obviously it screwed up. Physically, I wasn't able to help him out too much. And the shocks weren't, they were like 60 bucks a piece, they weren't too bad. It's nice though, it's got a, the, the windshield's heated down at the base there to uh, uh, unfreeze, to get the uh, windshield wipers unstuck from the window. Got heated mirrors, uh, cruise, anti-lock brake, brake, stability control. got the basic radio. I'm probably going to put a six inch screen, touch screen radio in there and be, because it fit, fits in perfectly there. And um, what else does it got? Power windows, locks, screws, uh, heated mirrors, heated windshield. Um, we ended up, we drove to Cleveland to get it. Uh, I drove my Wife's got a 20, uh, 2014, or maybe it's 2013, uh, Hyundai Sonata, which is really nice. She doesn't like it that much, because it's not really that's her style of car. She bought it for a financial reason, not because she really loved it. We traded in her Miata and her Subaru Wagon, unfortunately. I liked both of those, but 
they both had about 170,000 miles on it, and she had a repair, and she was getting nervous, so she traded them both in on the new car, dropped her payment about $20 a month, and now she doesn't have any worries about, you know, repair issues. And, uh, but the car doesn't really speak to her emotionally. I think it's beautiful, um, and we, so we drove that up to uh, Cleveland to get the car, to get this car, and um, we were running, I mean, 75, over 70 miles an hour the whole way up there, and we still averaged like 35 miles to the gallon. On the way back, we were a little more um, casual because we weren't in a hurry to get up there, and uh, ended up getting averaging like 37 and a half on the way back, which is pretty good for a big four-door sedan, I thought. It's, it's nice. I don't like it, but... Lexus IS300 sitting there for $6,500. So, a couple things I've had to do to this car, um, which I knew when I bought it. Um, they tend to be prone to front rotors warping, and it needed that. It needed rotors. Um, not that long after I bought it, they started warping, and they, they just do. The rotors, it's a big, heavy car, and the rotors are too thin and too small from the factory. So I bought some upgraded rotors, uh, drilled, and, drilled and slotted, and um, cross-drilled and slotted, and they're made of a much stronger steel, and so far, so good. And the other flaw with this particular engine, the 3.8 liter, is the timing chain tensioners can fail. This is a chain-driven double overhead cam engine. And um, the little tensioners that, you know, take the slop up out of the chain, um, I guess when the engine shuts off, the oil leaks out of them because they're oil pressurized. And then the chain rattles for a few seconds when you start it. If you let that go long enough, it eventually eats through the chain guides and then it gets to the metal part of the chain guide and then you have powderized steel rolling around in your oil system and then you blow the engine up. So basically when it starts, you need to you need to get it taken care of and it was a major job I've got a bunch of pictures of this job I, I may make a video do a slideshow of us taking the taking the thing apart um, it wasn't really that hard a lot of little steps but it really wasn't that difficult uh, ended up being about 600 bucks worth of parts and that was everything uh, new chains new guides new tensioners seals gaskets everything came from Korea from the from the original manufacturer and the replacement part has been revised so that it, the failure shouldn't happen again. So it was kind of a disappointment. You, know, you pay sixty five hundred bucks for a car, and you know you have it a little while, and end up having to put you know seven or eight hundred bucks in it. You know, not that long after you bought it. But I knew that could happen. So you know, not a huge deal. Um, disappointment perhaps, but not a huge deal. And I love the engine. This thing hauls ass. Uh, it, it's. I mean, zero to sixty is like six point something seconds. It's pretty quick for a 4,200 pound body on frame SUV. And um, I'm averaging about, I had to get about 22 miles to the gallon on the highway, you know, between 15 and 18 around town, about like I did in my old Jeep. Uh, by the way, the Jeep, what happened with the Jeep was that the uh, radiator blew and then the park pin failed and a bunch of stuff all happened at one time and I was just like, you know, I paid 500 bucks for it, drove it for almost a year and we sold it to a guy who was going to use it as a farm vehicle and I sold it to him for 400 bucks. So, um, I did okay. <laughs> um, anyway. Come on, people, while the light's green, let's go, let's go. Alright, guys. I am gonna go in here and stop the video. I'm almost near my destination, and there's no reason for me to show the entire planet where my friend lives. So, 
you guys have a good day and as always be safe out there take care